You're listening to Peace FM, the Peace Region's best music mix. Mark Jones with you in your afternoon till 6 o'clock, joined in a special segment by my colleague from Chet TV, Marlon Gomez, program manager for Chet TV. And we're joined also by a councillor from the District of Chetwind, Mr. Clay Bazandowski. Clay, um, first of all, and to Marlon, uh, thanks for, for coming in here. Clay, you wanted to, you reached out to us, you wanted to bring something to the um, listener and the residents of Chetwind in regards to something that's that's been made aware in regards to the, the doctor situation here. And I know I didn't know anything about it until I saw it, Get a, give it credit, it was in the Coffee Talk Express. Let's talk about that, Clay. First of all, welcome. Uh, thank you. Yeah, uh, yesterday was brought to my attention the uh, article in uh, Coffee Talk Express there in the, the letter from uh, Soto and Dr. Bannis about him changing his roles and, and duties. So um, I thought I would... Uh, you just pull it closer to you. It's not, yeah, it's not quite picking up. This whole thing will move towards you a bit, so... I thought I'd make myself available and uh, hope to answer any questions and maybe release some angst that might be going on in town. I know some people could be feeling quite panicked about the situation right now. Okay, so let's let me just from me just becoming aware of this situation. So um, I guess some background and you can correct me here. So the medical clinic that everybody knows about that's um, down near the post office, that's the place to go to if it's it's not you know an emergency situation. You don't go to the hospital, you go there. Now, my understanding is, and the quick read I've done of, the, done of this, is Northern Health, the Northern Health Authority, staffs that with the doctors. The, the physical building is owned by the taxpayers. It's owned by the District of Chetwin, correct? That's correct, yep. Okay, so the situation that's presented itself is um, Dr. Bannis um, has been there along with some other doctors, but now I'm being told, according to the letter that was put into the Coffee Talk Express, as of last month, I thought it was a typo, um, he's, to, to quote the letter, he's saying even though he's been here since 2015, um, his contract has been terminated by the Northern Health Authority as of September 30th. So first of all, I know you probably can't, you can't speak to Northern Health um, or speak about Northern Health, but what, what can you enlighten the listener and the residents on on this situation? So from my understanding, there's a doctor shortage here, but now we've had a doctor who's had his contract terminated what can you can you enlighten us on any of this and we will reach out to northern health here on this as well right and, and that's uh, that's a concern because you know, when you're trying to attract doctors to a community you have uh two avenues you have doctor um uh, what am i trying to say recruitment uh trying to get somebody new to move to town and then you have doctor retention um they're they're both quite quite difficult um you know we we are hopeful for for new doctors to move to town, of course, always. Um, we had a doctor, Dr. Bannis, and um, that was one of my first duties on council to go and meet with him in Fort St. John, actually. We went for dinner and and discussed the opportunity to move here, and I was very excited at the time. I, I saw Dr. Bannis as a real leader for our community. At the, at the time, we were down to one doctor that was staying from... Um, the uh, previous uh, crew of physicians that we had here, and the writing was on the wall that the last one was going to be moving. So I really looked at Dr. Bannis as, as the anchor um, for for our community and, and somebody that would stay around, which this is one time I was actually right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been not right many times, but mm -hmm. this, one, this time I was. And so we, we were very excited to have him um, over the years. We can see he's been tired, stressed, overworked. He needs help. Mm -hmm. um, so my concern is to retain him was quite easy. He's made a nice life here for himself. Um, the fact that something broke down, and I don't know what, um, if we're not able to retain somebody who wanted to stay here, I'm very nervous about uh, recruiting new physicians to the town. You mentioned a good point, though. You said that, you know, he was stressed, you know, he mm -hmm. was tired. So he's being put in that situation, so... And that's notwithstanding, like, whatever personal things as any other human being would have. But as you said, we, we've had issues, you know, retaining the doctor. So I guess on the personal level, okay, yeah, well, not everyone wants to live in Chetwin. And that's not the first time we've ever heard that. I mean, that's old news. But on the, I guess, job side of it, do we know or has there been discussions as to how it can be more presentable to doctors? Has that been a discussion? 
It, it was, and uh, and that's where the idea of the clinic came came from. So when I say that, uh, you know, when a doctor is stressed, and and um, of course, I ever I don't think there's a doctor out there that isn't going to be overworked these days. Not just in our community; many communities are are really struggling with this. And so the idea was that let the doctors be doctors, let them help people. Um, maybe you don't want to be a doctor and running your own business as well. So, you know, worrying about the the staff up front or their records or the uh, IT computer end of it gotcha. and the lights and the heat and all this stuff. So let the doctors be doctors. Um, uh, the council of the day was a council before I got elected, um, but they hired a professional consultant to come in and offer some advice and some guidelines on what the, we can do as a community mm -hmm. to to attract more physicians. And the Chetwin, um Medical Clinic was the big one. They said, "Get a get a up to date modern uh, facility that that people will want to come and work in." And that's what council broke down to uh, broke ground. Um, and and did and the premise was if you build it they will come um, it hasn't really been working working out that way yeah um, and, and I think I mean that could have you know several that could be several reasons and that one's always tough to pinpoint but then I do know and I and without being specific or getting into names or anything like that um, it has been mentioned in the community that you know when the doctors a lot of the times are stressed from so much work and feeling like they don't have that help. I mean, if, if I just I just do this TV gig and, you know, if it's sometimes it's just me because people go on vacation, it can get overwhelming. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine just one doctor trying to see this many people in our community plus all the people that we have transient coming through. Yeah. So previously, up until this building existed, there was like a lot of other communities, all other communities. Oh, Doctors had their own real estate. They had, or they rented real estate. They had a building. Like uh, before we went on, you were mentioning, Councillor, that there was a building downtown in the in the area of the movie theater and that. Mm -hmm. And basically, it was you know the doctors came in. They were paid just like in other communities. They were paid by um, the provincial government per patient, I guess, and they had to manage all this. Based on a whole bunch of things, it seemed to be that model wasn't working here. Based on, for various reasons, not everybody wants to live in Chetwin. Geography, it's a smaller town. It's a nice town, but there's a lot of people just for, I guess, historically, we've seen here that they don't want to live here. So this was why the model came about that Northern Health manages um, the doctors a little bit differently here. But now in the last little bit here, I guess even during this pandemic, we've gone down now. I was unaware. We've gone down to, we just had Dr. Bannis and he wanted to, by the sounds of it, keep working. He didn't step away. It just says his contract has not been renewed. So mm -hmm. again, we'll reach out to Northern Health, but, and he's not going anywhere. He's going to be around, but it's going to be a different model. Mm -hmm. Do you want to follow up on any of what I said there? Uh, yeah. So, so to go back and, and a lot of this is uh, speculation on my part too, but um, so it, uh, the term that we're looking for is fee for service. And that's basically when mm -hmm. a doctor runs their business and, uh, a lot of doctors actually like doing that, and I think that um, our, we, we did have a very stable crew of physicians here at one time, and I do think that that system worked, worked for that uh, crew of physicians that we had. Um, then it was presented to us that you know, they kind of went into retirement, semi-retirement, and you could tell that the system was falling apart. And so, like I say, the council before me, uh, very good forethinkers, um, they got the ball rolling on this. And it was communicated to us that people in medical school right now aren't that interested in, in running the business. So we actually reached out and tried to get developers to, to build a clinic and didn't get a lot of interest in that. So the district took that on themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why I say there, there's a mortgage on that building and yeah. that's held by the taxpayer. So we all have invested interest in this and thought that and this was a very unique uh, model in the province, but um, Northern Health will run that clinic and then the doctors will just work there. Um, is how I, I, I understand it. And mm -hmm. so there, there's a landlord-tenant agreement between the District of Chetwin and Northern right. Health. They rent the building from us yeah. and then they run it. Um, but yeah, the, the fee-for-service was working with, with those individuals. Some doctors do want to, to run that. All that is not really any business of ours. Yeah. Um, Pardon my ignorance on that. Mm. Would that have been then part of the private model then? Or no, that even proceeds even before that. 
Yeah, I don't think there's anything really private. It's yeah. um, and the yeah. reason why I mention that is because a lot of people make the comment of when you know health used to be privatized here, things were a whole lot different, and there was a full you know everything was staffed, and we didn't have all these shortages. Fast forward to today, and we have this issue. What can we say to people who have that to say about you know the current? Well, system? I'm I'm just going to jump in because I'm a little bit. I don't know how you can cut this out. I'm not trying to be rude or ignorant. I just, when you're saying private, you're talking about the clinic. I mean, the doctors have always been paid by the government. There's been no private medical insurance in BC, I don't think in, or in Canada in any of our lifetimes. No, but the clinic here, if I'm not mistaken. Well, the clinic was, people still got covered by MSP. It was, it was mm -hmm. just a question of how the building was run. Like, like exactly. it's the same thing on the coast. Yeah. You can't get a family doctor very hard on the coast. And because a lot of doctors generally are not wanting to go into public practice. I know my own doctor that I'd had for years, retired, there was no replacement. My parents had a doctor that was retiring and then unfortunately they passed on right around that time, but there was no doctor that was gonna be in the window to, to take over. So it's a problem province-wide. I think what maybe, Marlon, you're mentioning is that there was a clinic that was basically, the doctors were basically the managers of the clinic, and then they took in per patient, they got, I think it's fee for service. And this will be a question we put to Northern Health mm -hmm. more so. But so that somehow was working, but it wasn't working, because then I guess there started to be under that even that there was a doctor shortage. That's why I guess the district brought this idea forward to, to basically become landlords, build a newer building. Is that... Yep. you understand correctly? Yeah, absolutely. And that was a that was definitely a recommendation from from a professional consultant. Yeah. And and that's what council should be doing. Um, there's a problem. You hire professionals to get information, and you follow the recommendations from those professionals. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's and uh, that's what that's what they did. So the, to, to to jump ahead, the issue that you you wanted to bring forward, because like I say, I knew nothing about this until I heard about this last night. And you know, you reached out and, and made contact with us and our and my colleagues here. Um, there's basically, as of this moment, not trying to trigger panic, but there's a lot of people that probably don't know this. There is, in theory, other than Doctor Bannis, there is no doctor in this area right here in Chetwin right now. Is that correct? Uh, we have a doctor that's going to be here for a few more months. Oh, okay. Um, but this, and, and this is why I reached out because, um, you know, all contracts aside, that's none of our business. Yeah. It's not the district's business yeah. on, on who gets paid how and how much. Um, that, that's something for, for others to figure out. But mm -hmm. we are we are communicating with, with Northern Health. And um, the fact of the matter is, is that all BC residents deserve quality health care. And that seems to be compromised right now in, in Chetwin. Mm -hmm. And it's a concern. Um, and I just wanted the, to let the citizens know that that is your right. Uh, as BC residents, we, we do deserve quality health care like every place else. Mm -hmm. um, the citizens of Chetwin do hold the mortgage on, on that clinic. Um, and now we have our, our one doctor moving out of that clinic and working elsewhere. Uh, that That's a concern. Um, so if, if we were to, of course, reach out to our MOA, which, you know, as we both know, there's an election coming up, and mm -hmm. sure, we can speak to Mike, but if Mike weren't to be reelected, we have to go, like, a little bit higher than Mike. That's mm -hmm. the reality. And I say that with the outdo more with most respect for Mike mm -hmm. uh, because he does great uh, things in our community here, and I've, I've been a witness of that. But, you know, you can't put all of that on a single person to a degree. No. Who who can we then reach out to or who would be the next, I guess, organization that we can bring this forward to and actually get some attention on this? Uh, I think uh, working with Northern Health is a, is a good option. Um, whatever contacts is available um, on, on their website. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can, you can reach out to us. We're... we're doing what we can. Um, mm -hmm. This isn't actually really so much of a function of mayor and council, mm -hmm. um, but it's something that we've definitely took on because it's such a, it is actually a function of mayor and council because when somebody's looking at moving to a community, they take a look at things like education, health care, mm -hmm. um, what there is available to you. Um, I mean, if you couldn't get your mail in town, you probably wouldn't move here. So yeah, it's it, it definitely is something that concerns us. And I guess to go back to you mean the the you know the parallel in certain respects, whether it's a challenge to get a family doctor in BC, and you know I can only speak to BC where I've lived my whole life. I don't know about other places in Canada, but we'll deal with this. Chetwind, I guess, unlike other places where other places um, in Northern Health, I'm hearing there's lots of issues in in the north in the northern part of Northern Health with the doctor situation and shortages. I think it's because 
if you were in the mainland or whatever, you can, even if you can't get a family doctor, you can probably go to a walk-in clinic and get, you know, the doctor of the day. Whereas here, it's getting to a point where potentially you're not even going to have that. And I think that's probably the, the alarming issue. And, and we should emphasize Dr. Bannis has made, uh, reached out and made arrangements with the Soto First Nations. Maybe you can touch on that. Uh, all I know is is what uh, we've all read in the coffee talk. But me, okay. me personally, I am relieved that Soto reached out and and um, offered in this or, the, or they worked in a partnership or however it's working because... Had that not been available, we don't know if Dr. Bannis would have stuck around town. Like, mm-hmm. the, the, they saved our doctor. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank goodness for, for that. So he is going to be, from the letter, I'm just reading, you know, courtesy of the Coffee Talk Express. Um, he is, I'm just trying to scan the letter here as we go. He's joining their health care team. That's at the Soto First Nations. Um and, you know, I guess he's trying to also work out something with Northern Health to possibly be able to still be Soto First Nations to, I wasn't familiar exactly where it was geographically. I guess it's on the way to Moberly Lake mm-hmm. and it's, you know, you're, you know, you're obviously in the winter and that you're definitely looking at a drive of probably round trip, probably, I don't know, 20 minutes each way or something. Yeah, I guess, that up sounds there. about right. Yeah. So that's, I mean, just given the proximity and given what people are used to here, having to go, being able to go to a doctor, the fact that there's going to be a building here with potentially, at the moment, no doctor, that's obviously what brought you as a concern, as a almost a public service to bring this forward. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah. And and not to say that things aren't moving forward, you mm-hmm. know, where we're hopeful, we're always hopeful. And, and um, you know, Northern Health is always working to put doctors in this community. Mm-hmm. Um and and they've got their struggles and uphill battles too. Like I say, doctor shortage is not just a a unique Chetwin mm-hmm. thing. It's it's a provincial thing, and and, uh, and they're always looking for opportunities and recruitment um, opportunities as well. Yeah. Um, it's getting it's getting dire though. Um, yeah. And when I first got onto council, my first term, uh, I remember receiving an email at one day that our last doctor is moving away. And uh, at that point, what do you do? Mm-hmm. Um, like I say, that just thankfully, um, Soto and Doctor Bannis were able to come up uh, with a partnership, and, mm-hmm. and it's keeping them here in our town. And yeah. things can always get better. Yeah. Things can always improve. Yeah. That's, oh, for sure. That's the thing. Yeah. And so I wonder, you know, we run in as you were saying, this is a province wide issue, mm-hmm. but Let's not, to a degree, we have to be mindful of our area mm-hmm. and our community. So instead of trying to tackle, we can't fix the province issue wide problem, mm-hmm. but we can try and fix our end of the pond. Yeah. So, what, you know, stopping and asking and having, like, you know, actual conversations with people who didn't want to stay here and say, hey, why don't you want to stay here? What can we do to change? And where can we get to a model that it's not so much where the, the same story happens pretty much consistently as they don't want to stay. And well, I think, hist- sorry, were you well, going to say something? Or? Yeah, and, and I think that's where we have to move to, too. And, and you know, when we go to, to conventions and, and stuff like UBCM and talking with other communities, um, you see that it just can't be a cookie-cutter solution. What worked in this community might not work mm-hmm. over here. Exactly. And we really need to sit down, collaborate, um, and, and try to figure out what, and again, the last thing that we need to be involved in is a, is a contract negotiation. Oh, That's yeah. nothing. But, we, you know, we're oftentimes asked, uh, what can we do as a community to, yeah. to help retain doctors? And, and that's something that everybody can play a role in. Well, and I think it goes back to, I mean, just, you know, different doctors, whether it be parents or whatever. My parents have, you know, we crossed paths with over the years. It's always been, I mean, there's been doctors that have been fortunate back, you know, that, well, went, to, went through their training um, wanted to go into family practice. That's the first issue. Then it's a question now of, okay, lack of interest going into family practice and then getting the doctors to locate to smaller communities. I mm-hmm. mean, it's, uh, you know, uh, the Northern BC is not for, for everyone because of, you know, some people don't like the, the temperatures, you know, the colder temperatures, the climate. Um, but I mean, it's a beautiful place and that, and it's obviously for whatever the reason, out of the doctors that want to do family medicine, there seems to be a deficiency in being able to retain them here. And that's got to be the question I think we've got to go now to. I mean, I'll be putting a call into Northern Health this afternoon just to ask them, okay, what can you tell us about this? What is the issue here? Because when it's, you know, the issue is, and again, this is just me stating, I'm not expecting anything back from mm-hmm. you on this, um, that Dr. Bannis did not get his, you know, contract renewed. He was obviously working on a contract. and. You know, that's something between Dr. Bannis and Dr. and Northern Health. Mm-hmm. And I think by mm-hmm. this letter, 
we've heard as much as we can from his side. Um, it's it's now we need to hear, I think, from Northern Health. Right, right. Okay. Um, I think that that would probably wrap it up, uh, Clay. I appreciate you bringing this to the the attention of us, the listeners and the residents of Chetwind. And um, certainly, I think if anybody is really concerned in the interim, they can certainly reach out to to Northern Health, and uh, we'll add that onto the story in terms of a phone number for to call Northern Health. So yeah, and and I would just like to urge people. Um, it. It's something that can cause some panic, but he, our doctor is still in town. We still have access to medical services. Um, and, I, you know, I have heard that our emergency room, because thanks to our wonderful hospital staff, uh, if you go to an emergency room down south, you could be waiting six, oh, yeah. eight, ten hours. You're like, we, we do have a- access to, to health care, and, and, uh, and nobody's going to let anybody go without their prescription refills yeah. or, or the test results that they need. It's, yeah. it's not going to fall off the fall off the face of the earth so i I, um it's going to carry on it's on the radar it's going to get better um it we just need to band together and you know support dr banis support the partnership um and just kind of take the bumps along the road and we've been here before and and it'll get better i'm confident of that and that's and that's a good point to make i mean not to panic and i mean in the interim it's not the same as having a doctor when you physically need to see a doctor notwithstanding covid and that's but i'll change you people can again reach out to northern health you know you've got you know contact the the, the medical clinic here mm-hmm. and and they'll direct you i mean whether through 811 or whatever the biggest thing like you say do not panic and i think that's what you want to get across as well, well. And, and plus be kind um <laughs> yes. we, we they don't need thousands of phone calls um and the poor, li- poor person at the other end of the line, they're getting an earful oh, from clinic. everybody. No, no, I or know, even at even out. at the old Northern Health. Um, yeah, that's true. Offices. It's that's it's true. Uh, they're super it's fine not, staff. That's yeah. right, and and it's not productive to be to be angry. Oh no, and, we don't want saying. Yeah. I'm saying if somebody had a legitimate yeah. question, but Absolutely. yeah, I, I think that's yeah. that's the way, and I'll craft that in such a way how we're going to word this. So. Right, but we yeah. do need to somehow come together as a community yeah. so that this story can somehow change. Well, and Northern Health does need to hear from us. I am confident on that. And I mean, like I say, they don't need to be to to hear angry no, ventings angry. and and whatnot. Because as, as soon as you start raising your voice and start getting personal about stuff, people just stop listening. Oh yeah. And and that's what happens. But I do think I know uh, one citizen said to me yesterday, "Well, what am I supposed to do about my prescription refill?" And I said, "You know, I think you should probably call Northern Health and ask them that." Nicely, yeah. um, mm-hmm. kindly, yeah. but it's a good question to ask because these are the concerns that we have every day. Well, and that's what I'm saying. It's not something that you can solve or your colleagues on council or, no. or, or Mayor Coutre. It's you're, you're stepping up in, in the interest of sort of a public service, letting us know what's going on and yeah. that. But at the end of the day, I mean, if it's if it's a productive call and somebody has a genuine question, that's why I'm saying you need to call, I'm, you know, probably absolutely. the first step is Northern Health because the clinic staff aren't necessary. The clinic staff uh-huh. are there, but they can only answer so many things so maybe the question the chain would be if you want some more bigger picture things you need to reach out to northern health that's all i'm saying yeah no absolutely and i um and the other thing i just wanted to put out there too is that there's a lot of staff out here doing a wonderful job Mm -hmm. like uh, the hospital staff is amazing and then the unsung heroes of this community and every community too are the addictions and mental health uh specialists it's Mm -hmm. uh it it's a Oh, it's the real sleeper disease out there. And we do and have those specialists in this community? Is we that? do, we okay, do. And good. I try okay. to leave them alone because I'd li- I like to check in on them, but I honestly don't know how they do their job. Yeah. And no, I, sure. so I'd like to give them their space and, and let them do what they got to do to to maintain their sanity. But, yeah. you know, it's something I've really tapped into when, I'm, when I go to conventions in UBCM. Yeah. And it's alive and well in every single community out there. And those people that are suffering from from depression, uh, mm-hmm. substance abuse, mental health issues, you know, reach out because um, that's probably the biggest thing that that um, that people don't they don't want to reach out. They yeah. think that mm-hmm. it's I, I don't know. There's a stigma to it, and it's not just the amount of doctors that we have at that clinic. It's it's the other the other half of the clinic is is packed full of people at helping those and they're real unsung heroes too because don't uh they're saving lives yeah just like everybody else 